Hey guys, Ben here with Stringer Ridge Farm. And uh, we're getting close to springtime here in the deep south, but uh, it is a nasty, rainy, cold day today. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about our barbed wire fencing design and uh, some advice we got from uh, a local biologist on how to build these fences to have uh, be effective at keeping our cows in and have a minimum effect on wildlife. <clears throat> so in particular, we don't want to restrict the wildlife's movement and we don't want wildlife getting tangled in our fences and uh, suffering or dying because we put fences in. So there was two or three recommendations that they made to us and after three years, we've not had a single animal uh, get entangled in our fence. And uh, it seems to keep our cows in other than we had one calf got out one time uh, so other than that, it's proven to be very effective. So a couple of the basic principles uh, is the overall height. Um, a deer, at least the white-tailed deer in the deep south here, tend to not like to jump a fence that's over about 42 to 43 inches high. Now you'll hear all these stories about how they can jump even an 8-foot fence, but the reality is, and I've actually witnessed this here, uh, because we do have a section that's cattle panel fence that's 52 inches high and I've never once seen a deer cross that fence uh, versus these barbed wire fences that are between 42 and 43 inches high uh, they'll jump these all the time they'll also go under these fences so uh, first recommendation from the NRCS was with the overall height uh, they said try if your cows will stay in try to keep your fences uh, no higher than about 45 inches. So we ended up with that 42 to 44 inch overall height, uh, which is the, the height of that top wire. And then the other key thing was to leave at least 10 to 12 inches between your top wire and your next one. So you see how the spacing looks uneven. Our top wires are actually uh, 11 or 12 inches apart. And the reason for that is what will happen is plenty of times a deer will jump the fence and his back legs won't clear uh, the top wire they'll hit it all right so I found a spot over here where my fence is a little loose a big old limb fell on it uh, a couple days ago so I've got to tighten this up but while it's loose I can kind of demonstrate uh, what the biologist was telling me and I've personally witnessed a few different times in my life at different places uh, not here on this farm in particular but the number one way deer die is uh, when they go to jump over the fence and if you've ever seen this or you could probably find some videos of it but a deer if he's jumping from this side to that side his back feet get tucked up close to his belly but makes him face forward so then what happens is if he doesn't clear this wire he comes through and his feet catch on the wire beneath it i'm gonna work this so i can actually spin it and then his weight carries him forward and it twists and all of a sudden his leg is trapped and uh, he's locked in all his weights on this other side. He, he can't get and jump back over to untwist his leg or wouldn't even know to do that. So what happens is this deer either ends up breaking his leg, uh, sustains a significant injury, or even worse, he just stays there and suffers uh, and ends up getting eaten by coyotes or just dies from uh, not being able to go get food, water and different things. So that's the whole reason for putting this basically 12 inches uh, between your top two strands. Uh, like I said, that is the number one way deer end up dying and that's one way we want to prevent. That's the last thing we want to do is try to raise cattle and all of a sudden we're killing a bunch of wildlife. Uh, I don't know if you've ever come across injured or wounded deer or wildlife, it's, it's not something pretty, nature is cruel. So uh, if you want to avoid that, this was kind of his number one recommendation. Uh, the other part, uh, it's a little different. It's not for the style fence, but uh, what he was telling me is that woven wire fences kill a lot of fawns, actually. So two ways that kind of happens is, one, uh, the mama deer will jump a woven wire fence and the fawn can't get through. And if she's stressed from a predator or a human or whatever it might be, she'll end up fleeing and the fawn can't get through and gets left there and a predator or something ends up getting that fawn 
or uh, the fawn just gets lost because it can't cross the fence. And the other thing is like a four by four mesh fence that a lot of people use for sheep is about the perfect size for them to get stuck in. Uh, so they'll end up trying to push their way through. The fawn gets stuck, can't get out, gets significantly injured or just gets stuck to the point where it can't get through and a predator or something comes along and, and it'll eat the fawn. So we have some woven wire fences on our property. We probably won't put any more up. Uh, and where they're at, they're not really in areas where we have a lot of deer pressure anyway. They're up closer to the house uh, where we said that's where we may end up uh, doing most of our calving. But there's no real brush or spots where I would think a doe would, would fall on. So hopefully that doesn't become a problem. And if it does, we'll probably take those down and build a little bit more wildlife friendly fences in those spots. Then the other key thing was... For our area, it might vary in different parts of the country where your deer get a little bit bigger, but our deer aren't huge around here. The biggest bucks we have are maybe 215 pounds. Our does are about 100 pounds, but you can see like there's a trail right here and I've watched this trail and 90% of our deer go under this fence unless they're stressed. So if I spook them, uh, the mature deer will jump the fence, but 99% even big bucks will go under this fence and that's because we put a 16 inch spacing between the bottom now they said 18 or 19 is better but most deer can comfortably get under 16 and that's what we've seen and i was worried about calves getting out and going under uh, so like i said we've only ever had one calf get out and i think it probably laid next to the fence and i kind of rolled under and when it stood up it was on the wrong side because it's only ever happened once in uh, three years with these types of fences so that's kind of the other thing. Now they did recommend, they said, uh, if your cows don't put much pressure on your fence, it's not a big deal, but they, they preferred if you put a smooth wire at the bottom instead of barbed wire. Uh, we didn't do that. And we kind of watched, like I've watched a lot of deer cross this trail in particular, and we're really not even catching any hair on the fence. There are some places, uh, I'm gonna look along here. There's a couple more trails where you may see a tuft of hog hair or deer hair on the fence. But in general, even with the barbed wire, they really don't leave much hair even on the fence. Here's a spot with a little bit of hair. And you can see like the land dips a little bit. So there may be more like 18 inches under the fence right here. And uh, you know, there's a few strands of deer hair on there uh, right here, but not enough where uh, it looks like it's harming the deer or hurting them. And we haven't seen any with uh, any scars on our back or anything weird so here's another trail and again you can see there's a, a little bit of deer hair now what i may do is where these trails are is come and uh pinch down the the barbs on these spots but in general it hasn't been an issue for our deer or for our cows so like i said it's uh it's always good to involve some biologists and you, know, you can see outside this fence we leave a lot of uh brushy areas on our property between pastures and different things so it does a lot of wildlife screening it gives uh the deer places to have their calves without uh too much predator pressure so if we got a lot of these little brushy areas like this the uh the does can really spread out and have their have their calves in uh some some good well hidden spots so we don't get much uh much predation on our calves but Overall, that's kind of the basics of it. And you can see these bottom three wires, uh, they're only spaced about seven or eight inches apart. And that's just to keep uh, a calf or a juvenile, uh, an adolescent cow from kind of pushing their way through the fence. And it's worked really well for us. So the basics are 16 inch clearance on the bottom, seven or eight inches on the next two strands, and then 10 to 12 inches on the top. And that'll give you an overall height close to uh, somewhere around that 42 inches, give or take a few, depending if you go the wider or the smaller spacings. And then, uh, you know, our plan was, you can see all my T-posts have some more height where if we did have too many, uh, if we did start having cows jump the fence or get out or whatever, we could, we could cut that, bob, that top strand loose, lower it down about six inches and then put another strand uh, more like the 50 inch height, which is kind of more your traditional height for cattle. But we've got all Herefords and Hereford crosses and we really haven't had 
any issues with these cows putting uh, too much stress on our fencing. So anyway, that's how we build our barbed wire fences and it, it seems to be working really well for us, for the cows and for our wildlife. So I hope that helps you guys and have a good day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.